The Legend of the Great Pyramid Part 4. Wait till you hear this. The cosmic engine that is the Great Pyramid was used later as a symbol, a symbol of power. And this is exactly what the Great Pyramid is, a machine to generate power, probably with the use of water from the Nile. Most Egyptologists do believe that the pyramid was a machine. That's the crazy part about the whole misunderstanding. The Great Pyramid, they say, was an instrument of alchemy for transporting the physical being into a cosmic entity. Remember that Pharaoh, as history maintains, was the incarnation of God. The incarnation passes from father to son, as it did with Osiris and Horos. The pyramid, therefore, was the vessel that propelled the entity to the promised land, the Egyptian afterlife. The Great Pyramid, we are told, is the intersection of life and death, where darkness is met with light. They get this idea from the pyramid text, but why would you need such an over-engineered structure for the burial of a king? Is it possible that gods walked among us in the distant past, and that the stories we read in the mythological text are actual representations of past events? We point out the fact that across many different cultures, the same god appears with different names. The Egyptians knew him as Thoth, but across other regions, we see the same god referred to as Enoch, Mercury, Hermes and Tehuti. The god Ra is another example and is known by no fewer than 75 different names. And this brings us back to the relationship between Khufu and Kunam Khuf. Now, what if we were to tell you that there is in existence, in the so called mythological inscriptions, the appearance of the embodiment of intellect? The god Kimyu just happens to have an alternative name that he is known by, Kunum. These attributions remind us that many names of Thoth across cultures and, of course, the alternicity in which Ra the sun god is referred in dynastic times of Egypt means that these translations of the Old Kingdom were already lost in time as the dynasties emerged. The symbol of the god Kimyu is a serpent. This indicates a genius, and the name Thoth Hermes was just a generic name and indicates serpents of wisdom. The Book of Thoth protected by the serpent in the Nile, and the staff of Hermes is always entwined with the serpents. Moses too held a staff with a serpent during the Exodus. Much is the ongoing mystery surrounding actual symbolism in historical culture, but these are the clues left for us that survive the assault on historical inaccuracies. The fact here is that common ground can be found in the names of Kunum, Khufu, Thoth, Enoch, Mercury and Hermes, yet there is a separation of thousands of years and why has the relationship between Khufu and Hermes been pointed out in the past? Egyptology don't consider Arab accounts of history as being accurate, only that it is fantasized. How arrogant do you need to be to dismiss an entire culture's experience and understanding as being a fantasy? Imagine if American culture was dismissed as never having happened. That is what we are faced with here. They are dismissing history. Maybe it's time to dismiss the dismissers. Just saying. Legends are born of events that have happened. These people had no reason to lie, unlike the early British and French explorers who came to the region with money on their mind. The connection with Khufu and Hermes have never arisen before because nobody was looking. When you seek, you find, and remember that Troy was once a legend as well, before they rediscovered it. The sands of time and the hand of betrayal in a culture since means we are separated from the builders of the Great Pyramids. We don't know who done this, and the ignorance of our current thinking has blinded our understanding of these ancient things. Information has been destroyed. What did survive is misunderstood, and the sifting through broken debris that is thousands of years old is what we are now reduced to in our quest to find a foundation of understanding and indeed documentation to support an actual historical timeline. 
If we were to consider Arab legend and not dismiss it as a complete made up fantasy, then you would be considering that the Arabs tell us that the Great Pyramid was not a tomb. These people are telling us in no uncertain terms whatsoever that they knew exactly what the Great Pyramid was built for. They tell us that the Great Pyramid is associated with Hermes, that it was built to protect ancient knowledge and artifacts from a coming disaster, but these are only clues and ones that should not be dismissed because we know there was a great event in the past that crippled life to the brink of extinction. Our trauma has stopped our remembrance from the cataclysm, but there are other locations close to the region that see similar preparations for a coming event. The point in all this is that the Great Pyramid, and the Giza Pyramids for that matter, were long in existence when the era known as the Dynastic Egyptians emerged. The Old Kingdom are removed from the Middle Kingdom monarchs by thousands of years. This is clear and even if Egyptologists are not going to look at this, then we certainly will. It's the timeline of the past we should be looking at. Put the existence of the Great Pyramid back past 12,000 years as the Arab historians maintain that the pyramid was a chamber to withstand cataclysmic occurrences and preserve the past. In this sense, the Pyramid of Giza is an effort to remember the past and perhaps these people are telling us that the next cycle of cataclysm, when the Sphinx fixes its gaze with the star Regulus, this is the 26,000 year cycle that the ancients are reaching across millennia to tell us about. These people were not primitive. They knew of a coming event. They tried to leave us a time capsule in the form of the Great Pyramid and they left this place as a warning system. These are the three stages of existence of the ancient monument. Our history is stranger than the fiction. The truth is stranger than fiction. That should be the weird point in all of this. We have a mentality where we don't believe truth and in fact, Truth is strange to us because it is kept from us. When the Great Pyramid was built, the measurement of the entire Earth was known. This civilization had the means of measuring our planet and they placed the Great Pyramid bang in the middle of all the Earth landmass. They recorded this for a reason, that a technologically advanced culture would emerge and notice these highly advanced associations. This place was put here for a reason. It wasn't to assist a pharaoh's journey to the afterlife, it was to warn us that the future and according to the Arabs, major artifacts were placed inside. Ones we can only speculate about like the connection with the Ark of the Covenant with the King's Chamber sarcophagus. These are the clues we shouldn't be dismissing. Also guys, more artifacts have been caught being smuggled from Egypt. This problem is astronomical. The latest effort to smuggle these very ancient things relates to artifacts hidden in parcels in a number of the country's ports. A statement issued by the country's Tourism and Antiquities Ministry said on Monday that the Egyptian Customs Authority confiscated 16 parcels containing a set of possible antiquities. Replicas and molds used to cast these replicas with the purpose of exporting them abroad. An ad hoc committee made of archaeological experts were formed specifically to inspect the parcel's contents. The committee found a collection of statue heads of individuals, kings and deities made of granite, basalt, and limestone dating back to different periods of ancient Egyptian history, included statue heads of the deity Amun and King Ramses III as well as part of a colorful head from a royal statue that was likely broken off during excavation. The parcels also included four copper pieces ornamented with the floral decorations and Arabic handwriting dating back to the Islamic age. This was our part four in our latest mini-series, The Legend of the Great Pyramid, and we will be following this series in as many parts as possible, so please be sure to catch up on any previous parts you may have missed. And we will be back just shortly with part five. Comments below, and as always, and forever, which is a long time, thank you for watching.